I'm here at the HVMN booth here at KetoCon with Dr. Lat Mansoor. You gotta say it like that, Mansoor, right? Yes, they're correct. Yeah, that's uh, correct. We recently had a great conversation on my Keto Camp podcast all about beta hydroxybutyrate, exogenous ketones for endurance, for brain health. And I'm actually at their booth right now. And we're going to discuss everything you want to learn about exogenous ketones in a very short video. So, Lat, I want to start by doing a shot of ketone IQ with you so we could get our, turn our brains on. Cheers. Cheers. I think we're ready to have the conversation now. So, yeah. what Brain's is the difference? On. Brain is turned on. What is the difference between the ketone IQ and the other ketone products out there, exogenous ketone products out there? So, I'm going to compare ketone IQ to the majority of, of what people understand as exogenous ketones. So, ketone salts have been around for a long time. So, ketone salt is essentially beta hydroxybutyrate, which is a ketone body bound to a salt. Mm -hmm. So, sodium, potassium, magnesium. The problem is when you have too much, you have too much salt overload and you get GI issues. So you don't get your beta hydroxybutyrate level high enough because you can't take too much. There's another form that's ketone ester. That's beta hydroxybutyrate bound with butane diol. Mm -hmm. And that you can actually spike your, butane, uh, spike your beta hydroxybutyrate level to a quite high level, to a three to five millimolar in a very short amount of time because the, when you ingest ketone ester, your body breaks it down into both beta hydroxybutyrate and butyndiol. And mm -hmm. butyndiol goes to your liver and gets metabolized into be, uh, beta hydroxybutyrate. Got it. Ketone IQ is only butyndiol. So we take half of ketone ester and we realize that it's cheaper, it tastes better, and it um, works almost the same because it goes to your liver and gets converted to beta hydroxybutyrate, hence elevating your blood BHB levels. So those are the main, three main one, three main ones, and you obviously have other ketone diesters and all that derivative of, of all of that. But the ge general gist of it. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So I, I just asked you before we hit record, what about like something like ketoacidosis, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand the difference between ketosis and ketoacidosis, but for those who don't, ketoacidosis is a pretty pretty rare unless you're like type one diabetic, and it's when you have 15 plus BHB in the bloodstream. Now. If you take a whole bunch of exogenous ketones, well, let's say this one versus others, is there concern for uh, ketoacidosis? So for ketone IQ, for example, in our internal study, we have seen even with a very high dose, um, up to one gram per kilogram of body weight, we did not see anything higher than 2.5 millimolar wow. of blood BHB. Now the reason is because butane diol in ketone IQ, it goes to your liver and gets converted to beta hydroxybutyrate which means your liver is the gatekeeper here. And because your liver gets signal from all over your body saying that, hey, you've got enough energy, so convert this butane diol slower mm -hmm. into beta hydroxybutyrate so you have a slow release. In contrast, you get ketone esters. You get half of it, which is beta hydroxybutyrate, and the other half is butane diol. The butane diol works the same way as, as um, ketone IQ, but the beta hydroxybutyrate is directly released into the blood, hence, elevating that blood BHB level. So that means it's a much lesser regulated process here, mm -hmm. which means it's dose dependent. So the more mm -hmm. ketone acid you take, the higher the risk of you reaching a too high of a blood BHB level. That's interesting. So I, I recently have really fallen in love with this product, uh, the Ketone IQ. I'm gonna share how I use it. And then I want you to share how you would recommend the general audience use it. But I also want to caveat this conversation. I said, I said this in the beginning. This is not the substitute doing the work, right? You don't just eat a crappy diet, a standard American diet, and just take exogenous ketones. That's not going to do the, that's not going to get you the results you want. Teach your metabolism to produce ketones endogenously from within, and then use these strategically, exogenously for different circumstances. So for me, we just did it right before we hit record here because I want to be, I want my brain to be turned on. I'm speaking tomorrow morning. I'm going to be right here in the morning taking yep. a shot. You're welcome to, and it's supercharging the brain. So how is it doing that to my brain right now? So essentially you're providing your body with source of energy, source of fuel. It's a substrate that get metabolized that produce ATP. Now the difference between glucose and ketones and proteins and fatty acid is that ketones um, similar to glucose can go directly to your brain and get metabolized and provide ATP. So you're providing your brain directly with a source of nutrient that gives you energy. So when you have energy, you know, your brain's 
is turned on and yep. you get very active and you increase. There's a study that shows increase in um, brain network stability and brain network interaction. Mm. So the different regions of the brain activates when acutely when you take only one shot of um, exogenous ketone. That's how I feel. I mean, I, every time I take a shot of it, it's like, oh, let's go. Yeah. So before like a podcast, I'll do it. I started using it before two hours of fasted uh, basketball and it's made a difference in my endurance. So speak That's on how it helps with the endurance. Yeah, sure. So with endurance, it's again, um, studies have shown for athletes who are not on a ketogenic diet, they take exogenous ketones and they have their own glycogen already. So they are preserving their glycogen, they're burning the ketones, they're burning their glucose, and then they're gonna, they're gonna start taking energy out of the glycogen source. Right. So that way, you know, it's endurance, right? It's how long you can last, how much further you can go, and that is exactly what it does. So I went into the fasted workouts with very low glycogen. glycogen. Yeah. My sugar reserves were low. Yeah, so you're so, already on low energy. Low and then low if storage. I didn't take the exogenous ketones, I burned through it and kind of bunk. Yeah. So by taking this, I'm giving me a little bit more fuel source so I could start burning the ketones Correct. before I go back to my sugar reserves. Correct. And also remember, um, glucose is always better for anaerobic exercises, uh -huh. like high, in high intensity exercises. So you always need that glucose or glycogen stores for high intensity exercises. And I would categorize, you know, basketball as high totally, intensity, right? Yeah. You're, you're like sprinting, you stop, you sprint, you stop. Yep. So even if you're on a ketogenic diet or if you're fasting, yes, your body might be able to efficiently burn ketones for energy. And we know that is a very efficient fuel, but when it comes to anaerobic and high intensity, it still doesn't do it fast enough to provide our body with the energy we need. Mm. So we still need that, that glucose. But having this direct, you know, um, ingestion of exogenous ketones, you are saving that, you're buffering that, that period where you are converting your fatty acids into ketones and then burn them for energy. It's great. So you get direct ketones on top of burning your fat, fatty acid oxidation it's great. Um, into ketones. That's great. So some other uses as we wrap this up, uh, how I use it with my Keto Camp Academy students. If uh, somebody started keto, they're doing all the things right and they're checking their ketones and they're just not in ketosis, they're struggling to get fat adapted, I might put them on this for a week. Kind of prime the pump, let them get familiar with using ketones, take them off and then see what happens to their body. So I use it that way. And then with radiation exposure, just I, I always just feel better taking this, going through x-rays or going through something. Yeah. Uh, so that's, those are a couple ways that I teach it and use it. Anything else you would add to that? I would comment on that. That's a really great point. First point with your students. Yeah. I don't know if you read the paper on heart failure and ketones. They show that acutely when you drink this, you actually upregulate all the enzymes uh, connected to ketone metabolism from transport into the cell to converting it mm. into acetyl-CoA. All of that is being upregulated. So you are doing exactly what the paper is showing. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, cool. And the second point on radiation, tomorrow our CEO, Michael Brand, he is speaking at KetoCon at 1240, and he will be speaking on effect on the brain as well as um, covering a bit on radiation That's protection. Awesome. Oh, I can't so, wait to see that. Other ways to use it, you can use it for pre-workout endurance like we already talked about. Yeah. You can use for recovery when you take it with carbs and protein after your workout. That helped me a lot. Um, I use it for sleep. We talked about it on our podcast. I haven't done this experiment yet. Yes, I do it, yes. yeah. but one of your listeners actually come up, came up to our booth and she said, I, I want to check out the yawn. I want to check out you know, ah, the sleep protocol. Cool. Um, and, and I'm going to follow through Ben's um, That's journey. That's so cool. Yeah, I yeah. think that was Gail. I think yeah, that was Gail. Yeah, that was Gail. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. So there you, there you have it. If you want to learn more about HBMN, we have a coupon code with them, which is Keto Camp. We'll put a link down below. And then I also interviewed Lat very recently. We'll put a link for that. I interviewed Michael Brent a couple months ago and Jeffrey Wu, the co-founder. So we'll drop links for all that down below. And thank you for the interview today. It was great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, awesome. Ciao. It's great.